Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to style your blog to make it look like Elegant Themes new redesign. Throughout this tutorial, we'll be using some CSS and we'll also use some Google fonts and I will show you how to import these Google fonts so that you can use them on your website. So without wasting a lot of time, let me show you how we managed to do this. So before we get started, if you want to follow along all the code that we're going to use in this tutorial, I will link it in the show notes below. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to import the font that we used in our blog. So over here, this is the link to the font. So what we need to do here is to come down to uh, the bottom gray area here, click once on it, and then we need to make sure that semi bold 600 is checked and also regular 400. So now with that in place, we need to come over here to the embed button. So this is the code that we need to copy. So I'm just going to select it all and copy it. Now we need to come back to our website. Now I'm already logged into my blog. So I'm going to come over here to Divi and then I'm going to come over here to theme options. I'm going to click on integration and then we need to paste that link over here. So you can see I've already gone ahead and pasted it. So this is where you need to paste it in the head section of the blog. So once you're done with that, go ahead and click on save changes. Next, what we need to do is to add some custom CSS, which will enable us to point to the font that we've just linked. So we're going to come over here to theme options, but this time we're going to go to general and scroll all the way down until we get to custom CSS. And this is the code that you need to enter. So all you do is just to paste this code and this code can be found on our blog as well. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on save changes. Okay, so now that we have our font, our font from Google, the next thing we need to do now is to design the page header. So what I'm going to do here is to go on to pages, click on add new. I'm just going to call this our blog, but you can name this page whatever you want. Right, so I'm going to click on use the Divi Builder. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to make sure that I insert a full width header. So I'm going to come over here and click on full width and then I'm going to insert a module and this module is going to be a full width header. So I'm going to click on that. On here, we need to add our title. Now, when it comes to the title for this page, you can add whatever you want, but we are going to add elegant themes blog. Okay. We also need to add a subheading. So I'm just going to type in stay up to date. Okay. So that's our subheading text. And then finally, on this tab, we need to come over here to text and logo orientation, and we're going to make that centered. Now it's time to go into the advanced settings. So in the advanced settings, we need to adjust the font color. So I'm just going to click here and enter my hexadecimal. When it comes to these font colors, you can add your colors that match your branding. So it doesn't really matter um, what color you use for this. So the next stage is to adjust my, my uh, title font size. So I'm going to come over here, just drag this up to 35. So next we need to add the subheading font color. So I'm, again, I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to scroll down and just make sure that the subheading font size is set to 20. Okay. So we're done with this. We're going to go ahead and save and exit. So here we can see we have this by default. We're just going to delete that because we don't need it. Now it's time to add the search bar. So I'm going to add a standard section, single row. So the first thing we're going to do here is to come into the um, settings and make sure that um, the custom padding top is set to zero and the custom padding bottom is set to zero. And then I'm going to save and exit. And we're also going to do the same to the row settings. So I'm going to put zero and a zero on the bottom. And then on the advanced design settings, we're going to do the same. We're going to come here to the top add a zero and a zero to the bottom, and then we're going to save and exit. Now it's time to insert the search module. So I'm going to come over here and click on insert modules. And then I'm going to scroll down until I find my search and it's right here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to hide the button and the placeholder text. I'm just going to type search our blog. So next I'm going to go into the advanced settings. And I'm just going to make sure my width is set to 300 pixels. So here on the bottom border color, I'm going to click that and set this to E, 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 E. Okay. So over here on the input field background color, I'm just going to paste my color here. 
on the placeholder color, I'm also going to add my hexadecimal color, which is six Bs. So scrolling down, input font size, let's set, up, let's set it to 16 and the color to this hex, hexadecimal color. Now let's scroll all the way down here. So on the custom margin, we need to make sure that the top is set to zero and the bottom is set to zero. And then on the custom padding, let's make it 20 top and 20 bottom. Now it's time to add our custom CSS. So I'm going to click on the tab and on the main element, we need to make sure that we add margin zero auto. And then finally on the input field, we need to make sure that we enter the border radius 60 pixels. So now we can go ahead and save and exit. So before we move to the next step, we need to come over here to the section settings. And uh, in the custom CSS, we need to make sure that in the main element, we add the Z index of 10 and then go ahead and save and exit. Okay, so the next stage is to design the blog grid. So I'm going to go ahead here and add a standard section, single column. So here in the background, in the settings of the section. Okay, so coming over here to the background color, we need to add this hexadecimal value for our background. Okay, so next we need to go into the custom CSS. So this is where we need to assign our CSS ID and our CSS class. Our CSS ID is going to be SKU and our CSS class is going to be called Elegant Design. So what we're going to do is later on, we're going to add some uh, CSS code. And this is where the, these CSS IDs and the CSS class is going to make a big difference because that's what's going to style our page. So once, we, once we're done with that, let's go ahead and save and exit. Now it's time to add our blog module. So I'm going to click on insert modules, select the blog. And right here, we're going to make sure that we set it up as a grid. And we also need the read more button on. So now it's time to go into the customs, into the advanced settings. So in the advanced settings, we just need to make sure that the, uh, the header font size is set to 26 and the header text color. I'm just going to paste it in here. So here the meta font size is set to 14. That's fine. And then finally, we just need to add the meta font color. Okay. So that's looking good. And then finally, we need to make sure that the body font size is set to 16. So once we're happy with that, let's go ahead and save and exit. So I know I've added so much information on this before we had a preview. So I'm sure you want to have a preview and see what this looks like so far. So let's do that. So I'm going to come over here to publish. So let's publish this page. And then we're going to do a quick preview by clicking on view page. Okay. So, so far, this is how our page looks like. So here on the read more button, we can see that there's no styling tweet. So let's address that straight away. So let's go back into our site and let's go into our theme options. So I'm just going to open the theme options in a new tab. So here, what we need to do is to come over here to the integration and make sure that we go to the head part of the site. So I'm going to enter this code. And as I mentioned before, this code can be found in our blog post, which I'll link in the show notes below. Right. So this is the code that we need to enter. So I'm going to click on save changes. So now that we've added this code to the head part of our blog, we need to come over here to the general and scroll all the way down and add our CSS code. So this is good. This is the code that's going to add our styling. So I'm just going to scroll all the way down until I get to the bottom so I can add my CSS code. So I'm just going to paste it in here and then click on save changes. Now it's time to do a quick preview because I'm curious to see if that button appears here on the text. So let's do that. Okay. So now we can see we have this beautiful button right here for our read more text. So in the next step, we're going to make our page have a two column grid layout. So by default, the blog has a three column grid layout to change this to a two column layout. You need to go to DV theme options and add some CSS in the CSS custom box. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here to my theme options, scroll all the way down until I come to custom CSS, and I'm just going to enter my CSS code here, click on save changes. And now if we do a quick preview, we'll see that instead of having this three, we're going to have two and there we go. So now we have two 
For our next part, we're going to change the position of the size of the featured image. So to do this, we need to access the functions.php. Now in a previous tutorial, I showed you how to add a child theme. So this is what we need to do to uh, make this change. So if you haven't done your child theme, please check in the blog post below and um, go create a child theme. And then let's go ahead on the next step. So the next thing we need to do is to access our functions.php using our FTP program. So this is where all my files from my website reside. So what I'm going to do is to locate my child theme. So I'm going to come over here to WP content and then I'm going to click on themes. So here we can see this is our main DV theme and then we have my child theme right here. So I'm gonna go into my child theme. Now, if you don't have your functions.php in here, all you need to do is to copy it from the main DV theme and then drag it into this folder for you, which is your child theme. So I'm gonna come over here and open this with a text edit or any editor in your case. And then what you're gonna do is right at the top, we need to create some space first of all and then enter this code. Okay, so you need to make sure that you enter this code right at the top. So now that you've entered the code, now what we need to do is to enter the opening tags. So I'm just gonna enter my opening PHP tag like that. And we're also gonna enter our closing tag. So once you're done with that, go ahead and save. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. So that's it. So now our featured images should, should be clear and not stretched or distorted when they're displayed on the two column grid layout. The ideal size for these featured images when uploading them to your site is 1200 by 600 pixels. So by default we can see that our image here is above this title and also the meta details. So we're going to change that. So in order for us to change that we need to go back into our, our site. So I'm going to come over here to Divi theme options and then I'm going to go to integration and then we need to add some code into the head section of our blog. So I'm just going to stretch this and enter a few spaces and then I'm going to enter this code. So this is going to allow our image to go below our title and our metadata. So now that I've saved it, let's go ahead and refresh. Now we can see that the, um, the image is now below and now our title is right here at the top. So when you take a look at this, you can see there's some overlapping happening here and also the positioning of our search area here is right here close to this line. So finally, what we're going to do now is to add our CSS code, which is going to style the final look of our website. So let's go ahead now back into the theme options and this time we're going to go into general and then we're going to scroll all the way down until we get to custom CSS. And then I'm just going to scroll down until I get to my last code, enter a few lines, and I'm going to paste this CSS code. And as I mentioned before, all the CSS code and the JavaScript that we're all using is on our blog post, which I'll link in the show notes below. All right, so let's go ahead and save changes. And then finally, let's do our final preview. And this time we should see a major change to our blog page. There you go. So now we can see we have this skew line going across and also our titles have now been centered and everything is now looking all good. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we produce a video. We are going to be producing more videos similar to what you're seeing today. So until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.